it happened. David Yerachek has finally been traded after a long while of not being in the lineup, being in the minors as a sixth overall pick, who I feel never really got that opportunity with Columbus that he should have. But I thought Columbus in this deal did get a pretty good haul for him, considering the fact that he is a sixth overall pick. So, the Minnesota Wild have acquired defenseman David Juracek, a 2025 fifth round pick. In exchange, the Columbus Blue Jackets have acquired defenseman Damon Hunt, uh, a conditional 2025 first, which is just top 10 protected. It'll shift to 2026 then. Um, a 2027 second, a 2026 third, and a 2026 fourth. The third belongs to Colorado. The fourth belongs to Toronto. So, first off, I'm going to start off with the Minnesota end because I do have a few bones to pick with Columbus. I know that sounds a little bit weird. But with Minnesota, I feel like they are taking a little bit of a risk. They're giving up a good amount of picks for somebody like Juracek, but he is a sixth overall pick. He has the skill. He's performing really well in the American Hockey League. He just hasn't had the chance to really kind of pan out in Columbus. And I know he played a he played like a 43 game season last year and got sent down to the minors midway through as well. But when you look at his career numbers, he's only played 53 games in the National Hockey League. I feel like for someone like him, he needs more time to adjust to that system and adjust to that level. I feel like he's probably going to get that in Minnesota. And could you imagine a blue line, a top 4 of Brock Faber, David Juracek, Zeev Boyum, and what, Jonas Brodin? That's unreal. That That is a great top four. Or even like Jarrett Spurgeon you can throw in there too. But that's a really good defensive core that they're building there. And I even feel like I'm forgetting someone too. I feel like I'm forgetting a defenseman that's there as well. But regardless, they acquire a great sixth overall pick who I think has a lot of potential. Just didn't show that in Columbus. Now, first off, I want to talk about how what Columbus got in return. I think they got a terrific amount. I don't, I don't know what happened a lot in there. I don't really know a lot about Damon Hunt. He is more or less an American Hockey League player. He has played games at the NHL level, but has been more or less an AHLer throughout a lot of his career. I think that's kind of, you know, what we thought they were going to get in return for him player-wise. You were going to get someone to fill that defensive role in the American Hockey League anyway, anyways, and that's what Damon Hunt is. But... The picks. The picks are great. Um, I mean, Minnesota's not going to be a bottom five team this year, so you don't have to worry about that pick being, you know, a top five pick randomly. Uh, it's likely going to be, unless if Minnesota falls out of the playoffs, I think it's going to be a 7-24 to 24 range, probably. And again, it depends on how far Minnesota goes. It could become a 32nd overall pick if this team wins the Cup. Um, but again, that's just me speculating. You got a second in 2027. I think that's good. It's good depth in a draft two years from now, and who knows where Minnesota will be then. Uh, a 2026 third and a 2026 fourth. That's good depth in the draft. Again, you can't help but have a lot of picks. That's definitely a big help. But again, the haul is great. I love this haul, but I feel like it's 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 weird to give up on a sixth overall pick this quickly. And it makes me feel like, well, it's pretty clear there was something in the organization that just did not like this guy from the get-go. Um, first off, he starts off in the NHL. I remember he got walked by... Uh, somebody, and it was a pretty embarrassing highlight. He got sent down to Cleveland. I thought that, you know, he played all right in Cleveland, um, and he has been since he uh, came down there multiple times. Then the year that followed where he played 41 games, he just got randomly sent down to the American Hockey League right before a game. I thought that was really weird. And I thought I blamed a lot of it on Pascal Vincent, but it was pretty clear that when even Dean Evison came to town, that this wasn't going to work out. And the fact that that David Juracek just wasn't fitting on that on that Columbus blue line. And especially when they got out went out and got Dante Fabro, I was like, yeah. He's probably getting traded. So again, again, Juracek never even public public publicly requested a trade. I did hear from some European outlets that he supposedly called out the organization, which I think there is some right there. I feel like, and, and again, this might be a lot of the fact that he's from the old regime of Kekalina and Vincent, etc. And that um, he, you know, never really got that opportunity there um, that he should have with that regime. And then this new regime came in with Waddell and Evison, and they seem a lot better. I'm going to be admitting to that. Uh, and he just seems like he doesn't fit in. 
Uh, and it sucks because you look at that draft, and again, that draft wasn't really that great looking back on it. You had your star players, but there really wasn't, it wasn't that great. You could have had someone like Marco Casper, Kevin Korchinski. Um, there were multiple other players who were taken in that draft that you could have had instead of Juracek. But again, you could you could do that for every single team, honestly. But I think overall, I think that Minnesota wins this trade, uh, even though Columbus got an absolute haul for them. I, I think that both teams make out solid here. We'll see how Juracek does in the NHL. Because again, if he ends up in Iowa, that's a bad look. Giving up, what, four draft picks for this guy? not a great look so hopefully he will stay in the NHL but he has some good company there with guys like Brock Faber and um you know those guys coming up in the roster as well so let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below on this one a little bit of a longer trade video I never really thought I would make a trade video this long uh about six minutes here usually they're about you know maybe two to five minutes unless of the trades a lot for me but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, uh, be sure to like and subscribe down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, it helps the channel grow. And regardless, that'll do it for me. And I will see you guys in the next video.